Hey, this is Andreas from PokerBalls.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use one of my favorite iPad apps, GoodNotes. So this is a note-taking app, I've used it for ages and uh, I've come across some tips and tricks that are perhaps not uh, immediately apparent when you first start using the app, so I thought I would put them on video. Uh, first off, uh, here on the main screen, when you go to add a new notebook, you might not have noticed that the button is actually um, split in two. So the first top of the button will actually just create a new notebook without any more questions asked. However, if you hit the lower part of the button instead, you will be asked for a uh, paper and notebook cover template to use for that specific notebook. So that's really helpful if you have a template that you have set as default but sometimes you want to use a different template. Speaking of templates, you can also invoke that screen from up here in the settings and template library. Uh, and the reason why you would want to do that is that you can actually add your own templates using this import feature. Uh, there is some documentation on how you do this um, on GoodNotes' web page, uh, but essentially you can use images of template papers or you can use single page PDF files. And you just import them and then they will be available as templates for use in GoodNotes. Um, so another feature that it took me a good long while to actually figure out, someone had to point it out to me, is hidden in settings and then cloud storage and mirroring. This allows you to set up mirroring of your documents to a cloud service such as Dropbox, which I've set up. Uh, and then what happens is whenever you actually go ahead and create a new document or edit a document or anything like that, it will automatically sync the, the changes or the documents to Dropbox for you. That way you're always backed up and you don't need to worry about exporting anything manually. Um, if you go into this notebook, I, I want to bring attention to something that I don't think is all that intuitive in the way that image import works. So if you click the plus button, uh, you actually have this option on top called image and this button on top on the bottom called import. Both of those are actually able to uh, import an image into the document but they do it in very different ways. First let's try the one on top. I'm just going to select an image um, and as you can see it actually adds the image on top of the current document you're working on. That's very useful if you're creating some sort of uh, image-rich document where you're trying to make the point that this is a dog, maybe it's crazy, um, and basically allows you to use it like you would basically glue a, an actual photo onto a piece of paper. However, if you choose this other option, import, uh, and above and below it actually refers to whether or not you want before or after the current page so let's se select below head into photos um, let's select the same image again and then it actually adds that image as a completely new page so instead of putting it on top of the current page it, use, it imports it as a completely separate page so that's useful if you actually keep for instance a lot of different forms of, or templates or something like that in your photo library um, and you want to annotate on top of those or if you just want to do it with for instance screenshots uh, so I don't think that's all too intuitive just uh, figuring out the difference between those two but at least now you know um, next up we have something with the zoom box which I'm particularly fond of uh, so you probably know this already if you're using GoodNotes, but the zoom box allows you to write huge with a stylus like I'm doing now. Um, and it will actually shrink it down for you so it's much more accurate on the actual page than what you uh, did when you wrote huge letters. Um, so you can see that there's this little handle on the zoom box that allows you to scale it up and down, but it's will always maintain the same aspect ratio and that might sometimes be a problem if you're trying to match it to a certain 
uh, line height for a specific paper template or something like that uh, or if you're trying to match it to the signature field on a form that you need a signature on um, because then perhaps if you actually make it match the correct height it won't be the same the correct width and so on and so forth the way you actually go in to change that is to grab this handle in the middle of the zoom box drag it up and then you will see the second handle which actually handles the size of the zoom box uh, and at the same time it also decides how much of this uh, screen basically grayed out part which will be palm rejection so if you rest your hand there it basically won't care so you can basically choose the height and then you use the normal handle to uh, to keep the same aspect ratio but just scale it um, so let me just put it back to what I had it like and like that um, something that I use a lot in this app as a teacher is also something that is not available in other apps which is one of the reasons why I use GoodNotes so to show you how that works I first have to enable AirPlay mirroring to my computer uh, and just for the record the computer app I'm using to uh, allow it to work as a AirPlay receiver is called Reflector. It's really nice because it can basically save you the purchase of an Apple TV if you have a computer anyways. Um, so you won't be able to actually see the external screen right now but uh, essentially right now it displays the full page that I'm looking at on the iPad screen but it's actually missing all the um, all the interface elements. So uh, no zoom box, no buttons, no status bar, uh, nothing like that. Just the page as it's as it would look if you export it as a PDF right now. Um, of course, that's very useful because it allows you to use this as a digital whiteboard without having all the tools there to distract whoever is looking at it. Um, and when you use this mode, you also get this new button. Uh, up on the toolbar which um, locks the pan and zoom of the external screen so the way this works is that if I now zoom into a part of the page uh, that change will be reflected on the external screen so uh, the external screen will display the same cutout of the, of the page as I'm looking at however if I now click this button to lock it and zoom back out you can see that this bottom part is grayed out um, and what this essentially means that everything on top everything that's basically lighted up is what's visible on the external screen and this part on the bottom uh, is only visible to me so that's really helpful if you for instance you're a math teacher um, and you want to have your students solve this problem and just put it up there and then you want to work on it on your own without them seeing and then you can actually use this bottom section right here um, and solve it and then when you're all ready to actually display your solution you just uncheck this box and once again the, the entire screen will be visible on the external screen um, so that's something I actually use a lot and it's a feature that's missing um, in other apps which is what makes GoodNotes, uh, GoodNotes great for teachers I think. Finally uh, an option that has been added lately um, in settings uh, it's the external accessories button. So this actually works with a stylus called the Pogo Connect. I don't have one but it's essentially a capacitive stylus that also has a Bluetooth feature built in. So the way it works is that when it's connected to uh, your device via Bluetooth, it will actually send uh, button and sensi um, pressure sensitivity information via Bluetooth. So what this gives you in practice is um, pressure, a pressure sensitive stylus uh, as well as one configurable button, I think. Uh, it's also possible to have a palm rejection through that technology, but I'm not sure if GoodNotes actually have that feature. Um, has that feature? Uh, so, like I said, I don't have a Pogo Connect myself, but 
Uh, it's an option that's there, so if you're actually searching for a stylus to use with Good Notes, you might actually want to look into that. It's it's more expensive, like uh, than um, other styluses, but it might be worth it just for those extra features. Uh, so that's it. That's my list for uh, of t uh, tips and tricks for using Good Notes. Hopefully, I taught you something that you didn't already know. Either way, I want to thank you for watching and make sure to check out pocketables.com.